In today's video, let's talk about misconceptions that Protestants have about Catholics. I hear these time and time again. I'm going to give you my answers to these things that I hear from Protestants. And if you are a Protestant viewer, I would love to hear what is something that you believe is true about Catholics so we can have an opportunity to have a discussion and maybe share some truths about what Catholics actually believe. If you are returning to my channel, I'm so happy that you came back. If you are new, welcome. My name is Dina and I am a Catholic wife. The number one misconception that Protestants continue to have is that Catholics worship Mary. Now, I am going to be speaking from my perspective. I'm not speaking for all Catholics, but I'm speaking for all Catholics. Any faithful Catholic who worships Our Lady, it, that is a sin. It is a sin and you need to get to confession if you are worshiping Our Lady. We only worship our Lord Jesus Christ. So if anyone has told you that Catholics worship Mary, those are sinful Catholics and they need to get to confession immediately. We only worship our Lord. We honor Our Lady as the mother of God. She is the mother of Jesus Christ. She carried our Lord in her body. She said her yes. And we are eternally grateful to Our Lady for what she did for us. And that Christ chose her, selected her, and that she is set apart. She is full of grace, meaning that there is no more grace that can be put into her. She is sinless. And I know that that is such a hard concept for Protestants to wrap their minds around. And it's sad because they're missing out on such a beautiful teaching of the church fathers. Even your boy Martin Luther had love for Our Lady. So I do take umbrage with Protestants who repeat lies about Catholics. And you have to wonder where that comes from. That if you are a person of goodwill, you want to seek the truth. And if you are a humble person, you can accept when you are wrong. And I run into so many Protestants who are so deeply rooted in the lies that they have believed for so long about Catholics that they're unwilling to have a conversation. So if you aren't able to be charitable in this video, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and click out of this video and we'll see you in another one, or maybe just go ahead and bypass my channel altogether. But if you can be charitable and you're a Protestant, I'd love for you to stay and listen to the things that I'm going to say about these misconceptions and share with me in a charitable way in the comments down below. And let's just see if maybe we can dispel some of these myths that you have been led to believe are true about Catholics like me. Another misconception that I have heard is that Catholics believe that we are saved through our works, through our efforts. That's how we are saved by our good works that we do. Our salvation is the absolute gift and grace of God alone, not through our works. Now, yes, works are involved, but it's not because we do something that God is going to then give it to us. However, we do have a part in that. We're not supposed to just sit here just waiting for something to happen. We are supposed to do good works, and that is biblical. The fact is, is that we are required to do good works. We are required to help our brothers and sisters know, love, and serve the Lord. We are supposed to spread the gospel. That's a work. Reading our Bible, doing all these things, those are works. Now, the fact that if I read the Bible or I don't, doesn't get me to heaven. Only Jesus Christ is going to get me to heaven. He is the only one who paid for my salvation. Now, I can work against him. I can absolutely do that, and I have done that. I am a sinner and I repent of my sins, but I am a sinner and I continue to sin. And that's why I seek his mercy, not father's mercy, but Christ's mercy in the sacrament of confession. That is a gift given to us by Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but I want to take every single gift that our Lord has given to us because he gave it to us for a reason. Just like we have sacred scripture, he also gave us tradition. He also gave us the magisterium of the church. He also gave us Our Lady. You know, so many times Protestants shoot themselves in the foot when they reject Christ's gifts that he has given to us. He's given us the sacraments. These are all biblical. And it's so sad to me when you hear Protestants so entrenched in their argument against the Catholic Church as if it were something that is set apart from Jesus Christ. 
The Catholic Church and Jesus Christ are together. We, they are together. It is his church. The church is the bride of Christ. So I encourage you to not close your mind and have that knee-jerk reaction about the Catholic Church as if it were something separate from Jesus Christ. If you love Jesus Christ, you should love his church. This video is sponsored by the Catholic Novena app, helping you to draw closer to God and find strength in your faith. This app will give you access to a collection of powerful novenas, prayers, and devotions carefully crafted to nurture your spiritual journey. You'll discover a wide range of novenas, including those dedicated to Our Lady, the Saints, and specific intentions. The Catholic Novena app offers a user-friendly experience, allowing you to personalize your prayer journey, save your favorite novenas, set reminders, and keep you focused and engaged. Download the Catholic Novena app today, available on iOS and Android. Another misconception is Protestants think that Catholics don't read the Bible, which I think is funny on its face. The reason why you have a Bible, my Protestant friends, is because of the Catholic Church. We hear scripture every Mass. We read the Bible. Maybe we can't, for the most part, I would say that it is more typical that you will get a Protestant who can quote chapter and verse and they can play Bible verse gotcha. And they are notorious for that. And if that's the reason why you read the Bible is to use it against another person, I think I would really check the reasoning there. And if that's more rooted in pride than anything, but we absolutely do read the Bible. I personally like the Dewey Rames Bible, but the best Bible for you to read is the one that you're going to read. Of course, if you're a Catholic, I would only encourage you to read books that contain all the books of the Bible, all 73 books of the Bible, don't read a Protestant Bible where they had the audacity to remove books from the Bible. Definitely don't do that if you're Catholic. And if you're a Protestant, I encourage you to pick up a true Bible, pick up a Bible that has the 73 books of the Bible as given to you by the church, because you do accept the authority of the church if you are reading that Bible of yours, my Protestant friends. Another misconception that Protestants may hold is that Catholics downplay the grace of God. And like I said in a previous point, our salvation is a grace from God. It is a gift. It is pure gift from God. He paid for us. He bought us. We are blood bought from the cross. That's how much he loves us. Even if it was just you or just me, he would have done the exact same thing. That's how much he loves us. And it's hard to even, and I don't think that we can, I mean, if we're being honest, I don't think that we can really grasp how much he loves us and wants us to be united and wants Protestants and Catholics to get over ourselves and unite in Christ's church. He gave us this beautiful gift and we spend so much time with this fighting and trying to one up each other and prove, you know, who's right and whose Bible verse can beat up the other guy's Bible verse and cherry picking you know, all these different things that are in sacred scripture. And I pray that we don't spend our lives, waste our lives in this constant battle and being so tripped up with our own pride and our own need to be right that we miss the point. Christ in the Bible says that they will be one, that we will be one with one another and that he gave us a church. He built a church on our first Pope, St. Peter, And we have an unbroken line of succession. And we invite you, every faithful Catholic invites you to come home to Christ's church. We understand that grace is a gift. It is a gift from God, not earned by anything that we can do. And we fully accept it as a gift from the Lord. We don't reject any of the gifts that he has given us. Maybe in that way, Catholics are a little bit selfish. We like all the gifts that God gave us, and we don't have the audacity to say, no, I don't want that one. I'm going to go ahead and speak ill of your mother. Can you even imagine if someone spoke ill of your mother, your earthly sinful mother? And now we have a sinless created being, creature, our lady she is, but that's the mother of God. She carried Jesus Christ within her body. If you don't think that she's different from you and me, that's a different type of thinking that you've got going on. And I encourage you to get help for that. There is in no world that our lady is the same as you and me, other than she's a creature like we are, but she is so far elevated. It just, it boggles the mind. And I don't know why it is that Protestants are so quick to dishonor and disrespect Our Lady, as if there will not be consequences for that. 
And the final point is that Protestants think that Catholics don't want to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And I will say, I have a deeper personal relationship than any Protestant, bar none, because I and billions of Catholics like me are able to consume Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the most holy Eucharist. Because it's biblical, because Christ gave us his body, he gave us the priesthood who could confect the Eucharist, and Christ, through his priest, becomes the body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Most Holy Eucharist that I am able to receive him. There is no closer personal relationship that any Protestant can have than what a Catholic has in the Most Holy Eucharist. And you are missing out, my Protestant friends, you are missing out if you do not have the Eucharist in your life. And remember what the Bible says, you have no life in you if you do not consume the body of Christ, the blood of Christ. Not a ape of the body of Christ, not a a pretend symbol, whatever is happening in your Protestant church. The Catholic church, the Orthodox church, Byzantine church, We have the fullness of Christ in the most holy Eucharist and you are missing out. And we encourage you to please seek the truth before it is too late because you really can't get a closer relationship to Jesus Christ than by literally consuming his body. Now, these misconceptions that Protestants hold, I am sure that there is a laundry list of other misconceptions that Protestants hold. And we see them so often in YouTube threads where we'll have a Protestant, not of goodwill, who comes in and wants to try to rattle other Catholics. And it's hard for me to engage with people like that who are purposely being spiteful because I don't think that there's really a place for conversation with a person like that. But I do have some really amazing Protestants Protestants that are either coming into the church, they're going through RCIA and they're learning and they're asking questions. Some Protestants were still on the front fence about some issues. They're not so sure. I have Protestants in my membership community who are, they're Catholic now, but come from a Protestant background. And it's so fascinating to me to hear how that process, you know, came to be for them, how they, where they were as Protestants, so firmly entrenched in their beliefs as Protestants and the process that they went through. And, you know, I think that sometimes as Catholics, we can diminish that by not really understanding what a person goes through. You know, I've been Catholic my whole life. You know, I didn't have to do anything. I didn't, my parents brought me to the church when I was a few weeks old and I was baptized and I went through my sacraments and I've just lived my life from always having that safety net, if you will. I've always been Catholic. So I didn't have to study my way into the church. No one had to convince me that this was the one true church. But as a Protestant, you know, they are coming from a disadvantage because they have, they've been based on a partial Bible. They don't have the fullness of truth. They've been led down this path of thinking one thing about the Catholic church, about Christ's church, about Christ's mother, you know, not so much us as cat that's the laity what they believe about us that's whatever they believe that about us but they believe this about jesus christ they believe this about his mother they believe this about sacred scripture and for that part it's heartbreaking and i think that as catholics it's it's our duty because we love them and want them to be in the church with us that we engage with them you know and for me i just personally can't get down into the you know, mud with someone. My husband is so good at arguing and he can't, he's great at apologetics. So if you ever run up against the bad trad, he will give you a run for your money, Protestant friends. But for me, I won't do it. I won't get down into the mud with you. But if you want to be respectful, I'm absolutely open and willing to answer any question that you have about the church. And if I don't know the answer, and there's a good chance I don't, I will find the answer or find someone who does to help you. And you are always welcome to email me, hello at a catholicwife.com. I will do my best. And if I don't know the answer, I'll forward your email over to my husband and he can take a crack at it. And if the two of us don't know the answer, I'll find someone, I promise you, that will know the answer to your question. I so appreciate you spending this time with me. And until the next time, take care and God bless.